Hello, welcome back to our channel, Escape Forever Free. I'm your girl, Faith. Here we are working together towards restoring physical, mental, spiritual, and social wholeness. For those joining for the first time, here we are a team, as I said, and we are working towards practical steps that we take in an effort to restore physical, mental, spiritual, and social wholeness. So we do devotionals, we do exercise, we do health tips, we do counsel, um, well, motivational conversations or motivational presentations as we work towards this. This COVID time is a very stressful period, and this is a support team that you can join for an anchor and a crutch in this time. All right, so this is our devotional time where we encourage one hour alone time with God. So we're about to get into that. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for another day that you brought us to, the first day in the working week. We thank you for all the challenges and that are ahead of us. We thank you for all the blessings that are ahead of us. We pray that you send your Holy Spirit to possess us. So first, wash us, cleanse us from all our iniquities, Allow your Holy Spirit to possess us and guide us in all things so that we will not hinder our own blessings. As we go about eating at your table right now, let the food that we receive in these messages make us fitter, cure us of sin, disease of, diseases of, of sin, of the soul, and make us more prepared and ready to enter into the new Jerusalem, which is nearer now than when we even started this program. Guide us, we pray, and we invite your Holy Spirit's presence now, in Jesus' name, amen. All right, so we start off our devotional hour by sharing a devotional morning guide together, and then all of the rest of the one hour is alone time with God, you and God alone. So our memory text for this week, which we recite each week, which we practice each week and recite on Fridays, comes to us from Genesis 2 and verse 3, and God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because that in it he had rested from his work which god created and made genesis 2 verse 3 and god blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because that in it he had rested from all his work which god created and had made we repeat again genesis 2 and verse 3 and god blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because that in it he had rested from all his work which God created and made. And last time, Genesis 2 and verse 3. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because that in it he had rested from all his work which God had made. May God add his blessings to this and help us to remember it as his Holy Spirit leads us to use it to glorify his name and to edify souls, even our own. Our devotional reading this morning comes to us from Maranatha Devotional Guide, written by E.G. White. The title for this morning's devotional that we're doing is Counterfeit Sanctification. The key text supporting this message and this reading, 1 John 2 verses 4 and 5 and it reads he that saith i know him and keepeth not his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him but whoso keepeth his word in him verily is the love of god perfected hereby know we that we are in him the reading counterfeit sanctification the sanctification now gaining prominence in the religious world carries with it a spirit of self-exaltation and disregard for the word of for the law of god that marks that mark it as a foreign to the religion of the bible its advocates teach sanctification is an instantaneous work by which through faith alone they attain perfect holiness only believe is often the speech say they 
and the blessing is yours, is their conclusion. No further effort on the part of the receiver is supposedly required. At the same time, they deny the authority of the law of God, urging that they are released from obligation to keep the commandments. But it is impossible for men to be holy in accord with the will and character of God without coming into harmony with the principles that are an expression of his very nature and will. The desire for an easy religion that requires no striving, no self-denial, no divorce from the follies of the world has made the doctrine of faith and faith only a popular doctrine. But what say the word of God? Says the Apostle James, quote, What doth it profit my brethren, though a man say he hath faith and have not works? Can faith save him? Wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? The testimony of the word of God is against this ensnaring doctrine of faith without works. It is not faith that claims the favor of heaven without complying with the conditions upon which mercy is to be granted. It is presumption that does this. For genuine faith has its foundation in the promises and provisions of the scripture. Let none deceive, them, deceive themselves with the belief that they can become holy while willfully violating the one, by willfully violating even one of God's requirements. The commission of a known sin silences the witnessing voice of the spirit and separates the soul from God. He that said, I know him and keepeth not his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. But whoso keepeth his word in him verily Verily, is the love of God perfected. 1 John 2, verses 4 and 5. This morning's devotional challenges us to examine what it is that we are doing in our journey with God. As we work towards receiving a sanctification, not that we can apply it ourselves or work to be rewarded in terms of our effort being so great, However, through the grace of God, as we live under the conditions that, that are required for the sanctification of man, then we can surely all receive it. Faith without works, a very popular doctrine, we are reminded today, is not of God. It is not supported biblically. Second to that, we are invited to practice what we preach so whatever it is that our faith teaches us, we are to follow after it diligently. That includes, if you're of the Christian faith, that the faith that the, um, the faith and the foundation of the faith rather um, that borders the Christian practice are the laws of God, specifically the Ten Commandments. If we should seek to deny our, um, the practice of even one or the adherence and the surrender to even one of these commandments, then we would have been unfaithful in obeying all of these commandments. I didn't say it. The word of God does. So if today, when you reflect and examine the life you are living as a Christian, as a follower of Christ, as a surrendered person following the will of God entirely, whatever you call yourself or, or however you describe this journey with the creator. If when you examine yourself, you find that you're at fault with even one of the commandments of God. Do remember, faith without works is nothing. And if you say you love him and you keep not his commandments, you're a liar. Who are you today?
May the Holy Spirit guide you to be honest, to be willing, and to be surrendered as you take the Bible as it is given and we respond to it according to the requirements of our maker. We go to our motivational hymn to wrap up this segment of our one hour alone time with God. Give me the Bible is our hymn this morning, number 272. Give me the Bible, star of gladness gleaming, to chair the wonder alone and tempest tossed. No storm can hide that peaceful radiance beaming, since Jesus came to seek and save the lost. Give me the Bible, holy message shining, thy light shall guide me in the narrow way. Precepts and promise, law and love combining, till night shall vanish in eternal day. Give me the Bible, all my steps enlighten, teach me the danger of these realms below. The lamp of safety or the gloom shall brighten, that light alone the path of peace can show. Give me the Bible, holy message shining, thy light shall guide me in the narrow way. Precepts and promise, law and love combining, till night shall vanish in eternal day. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for the word according to it is written in the Bible that reminds us that counterfeit sanctification will not get us to the perfect character that we must have to enter into New Jerusalem. I pray that all the persons in the hearing of this prayer who will agree to allow the Holy Spirit right now to do a full search and examination of them and see if there be any practice of the breaking of your laws, any practice of any counterfeit form of religion, that they will surrender those habits to you or those commitments to you this morning some of it might be very hard to change some of us might be have, have been doing it from we were babies our parents our four parents all practice the same thing today i pray for a type of power working through your holy spirit in everyone who is in agreement with this prayer to surrender themselves to the full examination and leading of the holy spirit to correct these habits and to find ourselves in harmony with your law so that our faith faith and our works can combine to bring us in good favor with you and through your holy spirit work to the perfection of our characters this we beg may all ag in agreement with this prayer receive the support right now i beg in jesus name amen i pray that you truly invite the holy spirit to give you the support and to take you out of any error that you might be practicing as it concerns the principles and the laws of our God Almighty, especially as this reference um, pointed out, the law, the Ten Commandment law. If we break one, we're guilty of all. If you love him, keep his commandments. Let the words of our mouths and the meditation of our hearts be now and always acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Walk good, but above all, please walk with God. Love you all. See you soon.